friends, when I was in university and studied Japanese there, my Japanese professor told me that if I'm finished with the Genki books, that I'd be able to pass the JLPT. So today I want to discuss if it's really possible to pass the JLPT with only using the Genki books. And spoiler alert, I don't think so. We will discuss today why I don't think so and please prove me wrong. Like put your opinions in the comments if you think it's possible. I'm very happy to hear your opinion. And for anyone who doesn't know the Genki books, I will give you a quick rundown over the structure, but it will just take a few seconds, so bear with me. So every chapter starts with the dialogue, where new vocabulary and grammar you're going to learn in a chapter is used. Then there's a vocabulary list and grammar explanations, followed by expression notes, where you will learn about additional grammar points that don't really require a lot of explanation. And after that, you will get about 10 pages of practice exercises. And at the end of the book, you will find kanji lists and a few reading and writing exercises. There are also workbooks for more practice exercises and a little bit of listening practice. And both of these books contain about 1,700 terms and 317 kanji. And for the JLPT, at least according to JLPT Sensei, you will need 250 kanji and 1,500 words to pass the JLPT in four. So technically, you should be able to pass the test, like from the amounts you're going to learn. But <laughs> the problem is that actually when it comes to the Genki books, they will teach you basic Japanese to get around in Japan. And they're not really focused on the JLPT or preparation for that. So the things you will learn are a lot different from the things you will need in the JLPT, actually. Which is really sad because the books are so great, but that's how it is, unfortunately. When it comes to kanji, you're pretty well equipped if you learn all the kanji in the books because there are also a lot more kanji than you will actually need in the JLPT. But when it comes to vocabulary, things are very different. If you've liked the video so far, please give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you want to stay updated on how I learn Japanese, my JLPT journey and how I plan on moving to Japan. Thank you so much and let's continue with the video. After finishing both of these books, I was really happy with my vocabulary knowledge and I was really proud and I was like, oh, I could take the JLBT anytime. But when I actually looked at books like, for example, the Jin Nihongo Go Hyakumon book or the Nihongo Challenge vocabulary book, I was disheartened pretty quickly because I realized how big my knowledge gap was and I had so many mistakes in the Shin Nihongo Go Hyakumon book, like in the vocabulary section, I got almost everything wrong because I simply didn't know the words that they were asking for. So my gap is still there, <laughs> unfortunately, even after learning with these books for half a year. So please don't rely on Genki for the vocabulary, please don't. And when it comes to grammar, things look a bit better. I think Genki teaches you really the basics that you will need and I think you could maybe pass the JLBT with the grammar in the grammar section, I'm not quite sure. But also when I went through the JLPT preparation books, I also saw a lot of variations of the grammar points and also like the combinations of different grammar points that Genki only discusses individually. And I didn't really understand what they were trying to say. So I also wouldn't really rely on Genki for grammar alone. And the second reason why I don't think you should rely on the Genki books is that there is no explanation on how to better your skills. For example, your listening skill or your reading skill, you just get exercises, but the books don't teach you like how to get better, like how to listen for specific points, for example. And that's what I really learned in the Shinkansen master books because I have the reading book and I also have the listening book and they will teach you different skills, for example, different things you need to listen out for in the dialogue when you listen to something or how you should take notes during the listening section, etc. So I also think those books are really a great addition if you're struggling with these skills. And the third reason why I don't think that the Genki books are sufficient to pass the JLPT is that you don't really get to know the structure of the exam. For example, how the questions look like. One reason why most people fail the JLPT is because they either don't really understand the question, because they've never seen the question structure and they don't really know what to do, or they run out of time because they are way too slow, for example, if they don't really know the skills for reading, for example. And that's what you can avoid if you take at least one practice exam and see how fast you are, and if you actually understand the questions. 
but I would actually recommend to take multiple practice exams because then you can really practice your skills and also really get used to the questions so that you are hopefully less nervous when the exam rolls around and you actually know what to do. And if you're interested on what resources I'm using for prepping for the JLPT right now, like in addition to the Genki books, I will link the video on top here. And I will also link all the books I'm using in the description box, so you can also check them out. And now it's your turn. Please let me know if you think it's possible to pass the JLPT with only the Genki books. And maybe you've done it. Please tell me your experience. If you haven't done it, please also tell me your opinion. I would be very, very interested on how everyone thinks about this topic. If you've enjoyed the video and also know someone who could benefit from the video, please share it with them. And if you want to see how I am studying Japanese usually, you can watch those videos right here. Thank you so much for watching till the end of the video. And I will see you next Sunday for my next video. Bye bye!